Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process, explore and experience the very essence of human life. It is very difficult to get human life as per our scripture, right? but we do waste uh, the time for you know behaving like an animal. So um, therefore we need to experience that essence of human life, what animal cannot. <coughs> Uh, we'll uh, now we recall what we had learned in the last lecture. In the last lecture, if you look at, we basically looked at how to determine the adiabatic flame temperature. In that case, what we did, we basically uh, were knowing that what will be the product composition, right? Of course, reactants should be known to you. What will be the how much how many number of moles of fuel, how many numbers of oxidizer, right? That will be given to you. But product you won't be knowing, right? But here we are assuming oh it is going to the stoichiometrically or it is going to the lean and lead, product is known. That means number of moles of each constituent of the product are known to you. But in real situation it won't be, right? Are you getting? For that, what we will have to do? We will have to look at you know equilibrium compositions. Now question arises, we need to calculate equilibrium compositions, right? And if you do not know the equilibrium composition, you cannot calculate the accurately the adiabatic temperature, flame temperature, right? And if you do not know the adiabatic flame temperature, you cannot really calculate the equilibrium composition, right? So we will see as we go along, let us now look at basically chemical equilibrium, we will consider a chamber, right, which contains hydrogen and oxygen, right. It will be at a certain mixture, a certain uh, what you call ratio, fuel layer ratio, hydrogen is fuel, oxygen, oxygen is your oxidizer. Now, if it is there, let us say at 298 Kelvin, what will be happening? Is it some reaction will be going on or not? Is this some reaction will be, for, for example, this room, you know, imagine, right, that contains hydrogen and oxygen and uh, mixed properly with certain, let us say, stoichiometric ratio. That means where combustion can take place, right. But it is at 298 Kelvin. What will happen? There will be some reaction or not? But there might be, okay, because the molecules might be getting bomb, uh, what you call bombarded, they will be colliding each other, they might be breaking, they might be coming, they may turn away. but that is not really very much. But if you raise the temperature, let us say to 1000 Kelvin, what will happen? There will be some reaction which will be taken. That means hydrogen will be reacting with oxygen and we are saying it will go to the water, right. Let us say 2 moles of hydrogen reacting with 1 mole of oxygen, it is going to the 2 moles of water. But is it really will be occurring this way? Need not to be. It can also happen, right, the water will be decomposed into oxygen and hydrogen, right. It can also take in the reverse process, right. One we can say forward reaction, if I say forward reaction, right, K f I am saying, right. K means basically uh, reaction rate constant you can say and uh, backward reaction this is the arrow in the opposite direction you will be taking. Now let us say at 1000 Kelvin it is being raised, now some reaction is occurring then the products are being formed and uh, as you goes on you know measuring this hydrogen, oxygen and water let us say for example, right, then what will be happening? after a certain time that the concentration of hydrogen, oxygen and water if we are measuring will be remaining constant, is not it? 
they want to be changed after a certain time, right? Then we call it as a reach a equilibrium, right? But question arises: Is it at the equilibrium only water, hydrogen, oxygen will be there, or only water will be there? All three will be there. But is there apart from that? Is there any other species will be there, likely to occur, right? So what are those species one can think of? Any idea? O H, maybe O, right? H, all those things can be there, right? So the product, if you look at, it will be hydrogen, oxygen, water, O H, H, O, and some other things as well, like. Okay. Now question arises: Is it like the equilibrium when we say it is basically reaction is going on or not, or reaction is stopped? it will be going on right in this case what will be happening like if we will consider i will go back to the simple example of uh, let us say two moles of hydrogen reacting with one mole of oxygen going to the two moles of water that means there will be forward reaction and also there will be backward reaction even at equilibrium but the forward reaction rate will be same as that of the backward reaction rate yes or no right so then we call it as a equilibrium right that means it is statically equilibrium or dynamically it is basically dynamically it is all is going on only the, the forward reaction is same as the backward reactions right so that will be one. let us take an example like methane one mole of methane is reacting with two moles of air and going to the product of carbon dioxide, 1 mole of carbon dioxide, 2 moles of water and of course 7.52 moles of nitrogen, right. And uh, of course these are the things what uh, we generally write, right. But however, uh, we can say that backward it also will be reacting uh, like product will be converted into the reactants, right, in a backward direction also. So, Apart from this stable species, like carbon dioxide, water and nitrogen are stable species, there will be also other species which will be there. What are those? Any idea? If you look at it will be CO, right? Hydrogen, it can be CS3, CS2, CHO, CO, oxygen, OH, H. O, NO, NO2 and several other species which I have not listed you know like it will be several species right. And keep in mind that at equilibrium we need to find out what are this you know mole fractions or the mass fraction of this species at the equilibrium. For example, methane air system if you are handling is very small. I have only jotted down few of them you know it may be some more number of species, it is very difficult, right. Now, what I had told you earlier that, that this is occurring, you know, basically when uh, the pressure and temperature is not changing, right. That means, the chemical composition will remain same provided the temperature and pressure in this case, let us say P, you know. I can say one atmosphere pressure temperature is 1000 Kelvin, right. That is not changing. If I change, right, that either temperature or the pressure, then what will happen to the equilibrium composition? Will it equilibrium maintain? Equilibrium will be changing, right. That means any change in this, either one of them will have a change in the composition, right. So, that is very important you should keep in mind. In order to find the mole fraction of equilibrium products at certain point, we need to invoke chemical equilibrium condition. So, what are those conditions? We need to look at it. Right? So, as I told that equilibrium basically will tell you the extent of reaction or a process whatever is taking place. right? And at equilibrium, right, and it will be telling basically how much. It won't be telling you the rate of reaction. 
right it will be telling extent of the reaction is taking place or the process how far it can go to attain the equilibrium. So, as I told that that at equilibrium reactant and product concentration remain constant right it would not change unless otherwise there is a change in temperature or the pressure right or there might be also some change whenever suppose some reactant is in increase suppose some reaction is going on let us say hydrogen oxygen you have added little more hydrogen ok. Let us say in a chamber it is a reaction is going on in equilibrium something then you add more hydrogen that means concentration you have changed there will be also change in the composition right. Even you change the volume right then also it will be changing the equilibrium composition right. So, at the macroscopic level what is happening it is remaining unchanged means what at equilibrium composition is not changing at the macroscopic level. But if you look at microscopic level what is happening is it changing or not something is happening or not right that means reaction goes on it is basically known as dynamic equilibrium right. But however, how then it is happening the microscopic level is not changing because the rate of re forward reaction is same as the rate of backward reaction that means the reaction rate of the reactants is equal to reaction rate of the product ok at equilibrium are you getting. So, that is the very important thing you should keep in mind. Now, rate of reaction means what? Basically, change in moles of species per unit time per unit volume that is moles per second meter cube right. Now, when you talk about this thing, but you know we will have to evaluate this reaction rate quantitatively right. Then for that we will have to use basically the law of mass action which was given by two Norwegian chemistry Gulber and Weiss in 1867 right. Because we are interested to find out right a quantitative relationship between the reactant and product for that we need to invoke the reaction rate. So, therefore, we will have to find out right. So, law of mass action states that that reaction rate of a chemical species is proportional to to the product of concentration of the participating chemical species right where each concentration right is raised to the power of to the corresponding stoichiometric coefficient in a chemical reaction right. And this you, you must have studied in your plus 2 level right we are using it again. And again I will be invoking law of mass, mass action right in whenever we are dealing with chemical kinetics ok. <coughs> this is a very important one which you need to understand and keep in mind. So, let us consider an arbitrary bimolecular reactions right. For example, like A moles of species A, A means capital right is reacting with B moles of species capital B going to the C moles of species C and D moles of species D right. Now, I want to uh, you know write down this law of mass action for this what it would be then any idea this will be reaction rate is basically of a b if I take is proportional to c a concentration a power to the small a concentration of b power to the small b and this proportionality constant what you call basically k f that is forward reaction constant you can if you look at according to law of mass action right r r is proportional to c a a and c b b right and then this is equal to basically like that. this k f is the forward 
reaction rate constant or the specific reaction rate constant people say that. And similarly, reaction rate of C D like uh, if when it is getting to backward direction then R R E proportional to C C C and C D D right and K B is backward reaction rate constant right. So, at equilibrium what is that R R A B is equal to R R C D right. So, therefore, we can say basically from here right I can say K F and using this relationship here right K F C A A C B B is equal to K B C C and C D coefficient basically D small d right. Then I can write down this you know we can write down C C power to the C C D power to the small d divided by C A power to the A and C B power to B is equal K A by K B is nothing but K C and this K C is what equilibrium constant right this is the constant based on the concentration of the species right. So, now we will have to see how we will handle it and what are the things right about this equilibrium constant. If I know these values right K C, if I know this C A and C B then I can find out basically C C and C D that is the you know requirement uh, what we need to estimate right. Because we are basically interested to find out what will be the product right concentrations and at the equilibrium what we will have to find out. So, we know that K C is basically this term right and if you look at K C is let us say very very less right if it is a very small number what does it mean that means basically the more reactants are favored that means the reactants in the in the equilibrium product will be more as compared to the actually uh, the product species right but if kc is very very large right that means that means this will be this portion the product portion will be much larger than that of the reactant so therefore products are favored but if it is in between that means reactant and you know products will be kind of thing will be there. So, that uh, we will take an example maybe to see that uh, little later on, but now let us look at basically concentration means the number of moles per unit volume right. And I can write down this by for the ideal gas because keep in mind that we will be using ideal gas for our combustion calculation for all the practical purposes right. So, then that is nothing but your partial pressure away divided by R u t, R u is the universal gas constant, t is the temperature right. Now, what I will do I will instead of this concentration I can express in terms of partial pressure right. So, then K C would be basically P C by R U T power to the C P D divided by R U T power to D right and that is in the numerator for the K C and denominator will be P A R U T power to the A and P V R U T power to the B right. I can you know segregate that means write down this partial pressure of each species separately and uh, temperature separately. So, that would be basically uh, you know this term comes into picture and this we call it as a basically known as K P right equilibrium constant based on partial pressure right and R U T with C plus D minus A plus B right and that you can see. Now, we will be more interested to basically find out in terms of 
mole fraction right. So, what we will do? We will uh, now convert this into mole fraction right. So, we know very well that uh, right mole fraction is P A x A P, P is the pressure of the mixture P A small P A is partial pressure of species A right. Summation of partial pressure of small species will be equal to the total pressure right. So, then we can write down basically here in this place I can write down P C then X C C and X B D divided by X A A and X B B. Of course, this P will come into picture in the same term. So, this I call it as a K X that means, if you know one of them you can convert into other forms right equilibrium constant the three equilibrium constants being used right. Let us consider an example of water gas shift reaction right reaction which is being for producing hydrogen right because if you use in a reverse way right you, you can uh, carbon monoxide reacting with the water going to the hydrogen and carbon dioxide right you can really and get that and other way around you want to produce the carbon monoxide you can use that. Let us say this is a heat of reaction for this uh, reaction of course. Now, K C if I want to write down for this reaction it will be P C right this is a 1 mole. So, therefore, the like index is 1 and P water divided by P C O 2 and P hydrogen and 1 by R U T and keep in mind that this is all are 1 mole. So, therefore, this will be equal to 0 right yes or no right and then right is equal to basically K P K C is equal to K P K that means, it says when there is no change in number of moles during chemical reaction then K C is equal to K P. only for this condition otherwise it will be different K C is not same as the K P are you getting. So, let us take an example right and uh, in this example basically ammonia is produced by Haver Boss process as per the following reaction 1 moles of nitrogen reacting 3 moles of hydrogen getting into 2 moles of ammonia you might be knowing this ammonia you know is being used for the first time by these people like being produced by uh, Haver and Bose separately and uh, right. So, at 1000 Kelvin equilibrium constant is K C 0 0.0024 right is given. Now, we need to determine equilibrium constant K C for this reaction right like oh, one third mole of nitrogen react with one mole of hydrogen getting into product of two third moles of ammonia right. So, if you look at the reaction you know we know that N 2 plus 3 S 2 into 2 N S 3 right and this is let us say reaction 1 I can write down K C 1 as C N S 3 2 divided by C N 2 C S 2 3 is equal to 0 0.0024. And for reaction second reaction right that is one third N 2 plus S 2 2 third N S 3 what will be K C 2 will be C N H 3 2 by 3 divided by N 2 1 by 3 and C S 2 right. If you look at right this is nothing but K C 1 power to the 1 third is not it. So, 
that will happens to be that means k c 2 is equal to 0 0.0024 power to the 1 third is equal to 0 0.13. In this case, if you look at we can calculate very easily from the if I know one of them other thing, but what is the implication of this example is that k c 2 is greater than k c 1, yes or no? is not it, because this is 0 0.0024, this is 0 0.13. So, this is greater that means, in this case what will be preferred is the products, right. Products are preferred or favored, right. Now, we will uh, learn more about you know how to handle this you know equilibrium constants and how to calculate because in this example it is given k c, but now how I will know that, that we will have to see in the next lecture, we will stop over here. Thank you very much.